Good morning once again. I would like to thank our band for the good music that they bring each Sunday. Let's give them all a hand. Well, how's the family this morning? It's getting bigger, absolutely. Amen. I think you'll all agree with me this morning. It's It's been a long time since we've seen this much rain all the way over into the month of July. Uh, it just seems like uh, it just continues to run over Palmer, too. I don't, I don't know what that's about, but it seems like it's all headed that way. But instead of complaining about the rain, we need to be thankful for it. We had several years, if you remember, where there was very little rain. And during that time, numbers of farmers uh, lost their crops. Uh, some of us had nice grass in our yards, and uh, that kind of went away. It burned up, and uh, many of the large, beautiful trees around Texas, they died. I mean, they just absolutely was no water. But one of the giant problems during this time was that some of the surrounding lake levels got so low, you couldn't even launch a, a boat to go fishing. And this, in turn, started to stress out some of the fishermen. Me! <laughs> But if you'll take a look around right now, you'll see that everything in Texas is about as green as it's ever been. And it really looks nice. All the vegetation's being watered and fed with the nutrients that are running into the soil. Grass is growing like crazy. And it really looks nice. Texas hasn't been this green in a long, long time. You know, I've never had much luck when it came to planting seeds and watching them grow. But I've noticed that... Uh, the grass that Terry and I planted several years ago has finally taken off. And I mean, it has spread really nice all over our yard. You know, when we first planted this grass, we added some good topsoil to it. And, and uh, we would water it every once in a while. You know, we didn't water it the way it should be or every day. And it didn't grow much. It just kind of, it was kind of just there. You know, it, it really didn't take off. And... The problem was, uh, I know, we didn't give it the attention that it needed to grow in the way that it should. And I think that uh, so with all the rain, it's giving it the attention it needs so we don't have to go out there and water it all the time. We're on the go all the time and pretty busy and trying to take time to water your yard. And as big as our yard is, that's a little bit tough. I remember early on, I, I had mixed some chemical uh, fertilizer with some chemical in a spray tank to go spray a piece of property. And when I mixed all that up, it was a new chemical and it didn't blend good with the fertilizer and it gummed up inside my sprayer. And there's only one solution to that is you continue to add water and then you've got to clean it out and you've got to start all over again. Well, the only place I could do that was at my house. We have some bare spots uh, around our yard. Terry thought I killed the whole yard. It wasn't the whole yard, but we do have some bare spots that I probably didn't handle that in the very best way. I over-fertilized it. And as you know, uh, when you over-fertilize something, it burns it up. And I think that's what happened. <laughs> we, uh, I guess you could say that uh, we are sowers of seed. We're pretty poor at the time. We, we really didn't uh, do things in the right way. The same thing seems to happen in our lives when we fail to sow good seed. Galatians 6. Let's turn there. We're going to start there this morning. Galatians chapter 6. We're going to pick up at verse 7. We're going to be in quite a bit of scripture today. We are, uh, we're going to be in Galatians. So if you would rem remain there. Galatians chapter 6, being at verse 7. It says, Do not be deceived. Be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Sometimes Christians actually think that they can get away with sowing bad things into their lives because they are also sowing, maybe very lightly, but they're sowing some good things in there also. And when I say that, a good example is I'm sowing these bad things in my life, but i am also got a few little good things. I go to church on Sunday, so that's a good thing. You know, I help out every once in a while with uh, 
things to church. I help other people. I'm a good person. So I have all that going on in my life. So these bad things, that kind of offsets that. But it doesn't. When you sow bad things into your life or bad seed into your life, then you're going to get that same result. But the Scripture says this. It says, don't be fooled. You will reap what you sow. Don't be fooled. You will reap what you sow. Make sure, yeah. It says, do not be, be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So whatever you put into your life, you're going to get that outcome. Whatever you put into something, if you halfway do something, then you're going to get a halfway result. Same thing applies to your life. God knows what you're doing. And where it says, but the scripture says, don't be fooled, you will reap what you sow. God knows what you're doing. And the scripture said, God is not mocked. And that means you're not fooling God at all with what you're doing. You're not fooling him if you think he doesn't know that you're sowing this bad seed in your life or you're doing something sinful. If you believe that that's an offset by helping out at the church, coming to church, being a good person, if you think that that's an offset for what you do, that it balances out, God doesn't see it that way at all. We're also told in the book of Matthew that we are to sow sow seed in good soil, in good soil. Jesus wants us to understand when we sow seed in different soils or in different ways, we get different results. And that's true. If any farmer will tell you, depending on what the ground's like or what the soil's like, when you plant in it, you're going to get a lot of different results there. So we're going to pick up in Matthew, if you would turn with me there. We're going to Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 3. We're going to skip around a little bit here. So save your place there in Galatians because we'll be back there in a few minutes. We're going to Matthew chapter 13, beginning verse 3. And Jesus, he told this parable while speaking to a large crowd that had gathered around him. And he he was kind of speaking in parables to, to actually help people understand when they heard what he said that they would kind of get a grasp of it. So that's where we're going to go right here now. Reading from Matthew chapter 13. Verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the rocky path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word. Oops, am I in the right place? No, I'm in the wrong place. We're at chapter 3. Back up. I already got ahead of myself. Matthew chapter 13, verse 3. Let's back up a little bit. I'm getting excited. Get way ahead. It says, The farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what it was sown. And if we, if we kind of understand the way he's saying this, he's trying to tell you that the way you plant the seed in the soil is going to change the result and the outcome. He's trying to be real clear with people on that. But then, once again, down in, in verse 18, if you'll move there with me, he explains exactly what the parable means. So we're going to pick up there. Make sure I'm getting in the right place. It says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop 
yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Pay attention to that part that says, hears the word and understands it. I would also say right here that not only do we need to understand God's word, but we need to apply it to our lives. Because just hearing it is not what it takes. You have to apply what you hear or what you read in the Bible to your life of God's Word. question is this morning for each and every one of us is what seeds are we sowing into our lives? Are we sowing good seed? Are we sowing bad seed? Are we sowing both together? Let's go back to Galatians. We're going back to Galatians chapter 6. We're going to pick up at verse 8. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. It says, Whoever sows to, the, to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's easy in today's society to go with the worldly things. It's easy to sow to the flesh and not to, not to the spirit that we need to have. Very, very easy to get there because that's all we see. That's all that's put toward us. That's, that's where we put our focus, the TV, radio, Internet. Everything is focused with something bad coming out of it that we wind up sowing into our lives. And we need to sow good things into our life. Here, though... The flesh being spoke about is not actually referring to our physical bodies. It's not actually that. The flesh is what the Bible calls our sinful nature. So don't get confused there. What we're doing is we're sowing seeds of sin into our life, or the flesh. And it's the part, that's the part that makes us rebellious against God. That's the part that makes us resistant against God is sin and the sinful nature of our lives. It makes us not, not want to be part of that. Not want to be connected with God. Not want to do the right thing. That's what happens is when we start to sow bad seeds or we allow sin to enter our lives. The sin of a... The sins of the flesh are, are if you have a sinful nature, it can generate all kinds of things in your life. It can generate... Well, let's look at Galatians... Chapter 5. It'll give us an example there. Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 19. I hope you brought your Bible with you this morning and you're following along in your Bible because I don't want you to take my word for this. Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish, ambition, dissension, fractions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. (coughs) Excuse me. Something I want you to pay attention to in that scripture. More than anything else, it says, notice that this list is not complete. That's what you need to pay attention to. Because there at the end, it says, and the likes. And the likes of this. They're talking about, there are many, many other things that you could add to that list. That is a bad seed to have come into your life. And by planting bad seeds, these are the results that you get out of it. And once again... If you continue to do that, destruction comes. It's real easy to get there. Real easy to be there. Think, well, what I'm doing really doesn't hurt anything. What I'm doing really doesn't... It's it's just a little lie. It's just a little white lie. You know, it's simple. I'm lying for the right reasons. A lie is a lie. Period. God sees it that way. Doesn't matter whether it's big or little, it's a lie. If you do something wrong, and you know in your heart it's wrong, God knows it's wrong too, right? So you're not hiding anything. Remember, 
God will not be mocked. He will not be fooled. He knows exactly what's going on with you. And if you remember what that says, will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we don't want to go there, right? That's no place that we'd like to be, just like we don't want to be on that bus, right? We don't need to go there. Amen? Remember what it said in Galatians. God is not mocked. Remember that part. God is not mocked. You're not fooling him by hiding your sins. Many people got sins hidden away in a closet somewhere, or they don't get out, and they think nobody will know. Nobody's going to find out. They got them hidden away, and it's okay. And they believe that. But remember, you're not fooling God. You're not hiding your sins from Him and what you're planning in, planning into your life. Numbers, uh, in Numbers 30, chapter 32, verse 23, you don't have to go there. I'm going to read it for you. It says, you may be sure that your sin will be found out. Pretty clear. Whatever you do that you think you're hiding, God already knows. He already knows your intent before you ever do it. So these are seeds that get planted in our lives and we allow it thinking it's okay because we're doing this good stuff over here but we're doing this bad stuff over here and it's all going to gel together. It's going to be okay. But the Bible very clearly says, no, it's not. If these particular things are in your life that are sinful and unpleasing to God, He's not okay with that. He's not going to say, well, it's okay because you did this. You don't earn your way into heaven. That's the thinking of many people. I'll do the work and I earn my way, but I can still slide over here. It's kind of like we like to, that sin in our lives that we kind of, what do they say? We like to rub up against it every once in a while because it feels good. But it's wrong. It's wrong. And the reason it feels good is the devil wants you to believe that. And that's where he wants you, and it's easy to get you there. What is it, though, that we should be sowing seeds to? What kind of seeds should we be sowing, and how should we be sowing them, and what to? Which is a great question. And we can look at Galatians 6, once again, chapter 8, for that answer. So if you're still holding your place, and you go back there with me, we're at Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. part I want you to read is whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So, what's that mean? We need to sow to the Spirit. We need to sow the seeds of Christ in our lives. We need to have the Spirit of Christ in our lives and in our hearts. That's what we need to be sowing to. And if we have that, it gets a whole lot easier. We need to be sowing seeds that produce fruit and the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Whole different concept. Now what are you talking about? Now we know that you can't sow fruit. You've got to sow the seed to produce the fruit. I mean, you can't take an apple and super glue it to a tree and go, hey, I planted this. It doesn't work like that, right? You've got to plant the seed to get the fruit. And when you plant the seed... You've got to water it, nurture it, give it all the nutrition, continue to give it attention if you want a good crop. Ask any of these farmers to get out here and work so hard. If they don't do the right things, they don't prepare the soil and plant the seeds and take care of the seeds and care for it, then they don't get a crop out of it. And for many of these farmers, that's a lot of bucks. That's a lot of money thrown away if they don't do it right. So if we need to be sowing seed that will produce a fruit in the fruit of the Spirit, how do we get there? What does the fruit look like that God's talking about? So we're going to skip back. If you'll turn back just a page or two, we're going to Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 22. Am I going too fast for you? Probably so. Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 22. This, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus 
have crucified the flesh, rather gotten rid of sin with its passions and desires. The fruit of the Spirit. And the most important thing when you read the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. All that ties together with the planting of the seed. All that ties together with a bad seed. All of it. Because if we have self-control, then we can keep that bad seed out of our lives. But without that, we're open to the devil's attacks, and he's on the attack constantly. Especially if you have something good going on in your life, if you have something that, that you're doing for God, or God's kingdom, he's after you. Many people here in this church can testify to that, that he's after them. They're doing the right things. They have a hard time understanding, why is this happening in my life? When you're connected with God and you're planting good seeds, not only good seeds in your life, but you're planting good seeds in other people's lives, Satan's going to come after you full force. I've seen that happen in my life and many people here in the church where that's going on. The deal is, is to be able to have the self-control and discipline not to fall into the devil's ways. To make sure that your faith is strong, your belief, your connection with God is very, very strong, and you understand God's Word. Understand what it is He can do for you in every situation. Sometimes, the, you know, the devil likes to see you roll over and give up. You know, you win. And I've heard that said. Well, he wins. No, he doesn't. If you're a Christian and you believe in God and you've got some self-control, you're a winner. And you all are winners today just for showing up here to be part of God's worship and God's house. That's the start. You're sowing good seed today. But you can't just do it on Sunday morning. You have to do it every day. And when you're sowing good seed into your life, you're also sowing good seed into somebody else's. Very, very important. You don't realize how you affect people around you. Sometimes we don't even know the seed we planted. It could be years later that it could come back and you realize those seeds you planted that long ago have produced fruit. And sometimes you may never know at all. Many of us here today can testify to that. You know, I've been here eight years. Sometimes we planted seeds and we did things that we thought really didn't have any effect. In, in things that went on here at the church. And here we are years later seeing how those seeds are producing fruit and continuing to produce fruit. So it's kind of like a chain reaction. If you plant a seed in someone's life and it produces fruit, then they start to produce fruit and we are increasing God's kingdom for God Himself. Amen? All of us have that ability and it goes on. So I would say rather... We need to have the Spirit of God living inside us in order to sow good seeds of the Spirit. So if you don't have God's Spirit inside, then it's really hard to sow good seeds. It's really hard to have self-control in our lives. If you don't understand what I'm talking about in self-control, drive through Dallas one day. It will stretch your self-control and you'll see many other people that don't have it. So it's, it's learning to cope with every situation. My wife rides with me in my car. Sometimes she has to remind me that I'm not in control. When I ride with her in her car, especially if I rode with her on Sunday morning, I could get all my praying done before I got here. She drives. Planting good seed is very, very important in our lives. What, what we do with our lives, what we bring into our lives. And here's the thing, you can't mix, you can't mix it. You can't mix bad seed with good seed and get a good crop. Same way, when you're mixing certain sinful things into your life, including the people you hang around, the people that, you know, we always say, hey, it's okay if we hang around those people because we're actually 
trying to get them to understand and come to Christ. If you're not careful, as it says, the weeds can grow up and choke that out. And that means instead of you pulling them over on God's side, they're pulling you back on Satan's side. So you've got to choose who you're around. And if you're around negative and bad seed all day long, then what's going to happen? Sooner or later, you're planting that in your life, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the same outcome. Just like growing a garden, there are two things involved in growing spiritually. Two things. Caring for the seed and removing the weeds. That's pretty strong. Caring for the seed and removing the weeds. And when we're talking about weeds, we're talking about things that bring sin into your life. You've got to get rid of them. One way that we can care for the seeds is, one way is to be here on Sunday morning. Hear God's Word. Understand God's Word and apply it to our lives. One way. The other way is reading God's Word daily. When you read God's Word, you are planting seeds into your life and it helps you gain self-control in your life because God's Word never goes void. So, that's where a lot of us struggle. I don't have time to read the Bible. Not true. I don't take time to read the Bible. Well, I know that sounds hard. But I'll tell you this, if you want to gain wisdom pretty quickly in God's Word, just read Proverbs. Read one piece of Proverbs every day, and you will gain good seed and wisdom in your life like no other time. Understanding God's Word sometimes can be complicated. You need a good study Bible. You need a good study Bible that will help you. But you also need to attend some Bible studies. If you're struggling with understanding what's going on in the Bible, then it wouldn't hurt to attend a Bible study or two. It wouldn't hurt to get involved in some, some connect groups. Someone that can mentor you and teach you a little bit more about how to understand the Bible and what direction to go. We want to have all that. And we want to offer all that. Because we don't want you to come in here and walk out of here not understanding what's going on. Sometimes people go, well, sometimes your sermons don't go deep enough. They're exactly right. I am not a deep person. I'm about as shallow as that little puddle out there. That's not, that's not hard at all. Here's the deep one, right? But understanding that I want you to walk out of here understanding what we talked about today. I'm a visual person. I do a lot of videos. I probably say a lot of things that are not politically correct. And the people that want to be politi politically correct may walk out of here, but they're going to remember it, right? So either way, you're making your point. I want you to understand when you leave here today what I'm talking about. And this is a real simple message. Get rid of the sin in your life and start planting good, sin in your, good stuff in your life. If you, for any reason, have things going on continually in your life, rejoice in it. Because that means Satan's after you because you're doing something right. Amen? So don't look at it, well, all this bad stuff's happening to me. Man, I must be doing something right for God because he's after me today. Shoot, he's been after all of us one time or another. Amen? And he will not let up. We must water our lives with the nourishing water of God's Word so that fruit will grow. Think about that. Nourish it with God's water. His clear, pure water is what we need for that seed to grow in our lives. Just like gardening is. Just like if you go out in your garden, many of you know, Ken can tell you all about that. We must remove the weeds or the sins in our lives because they will choke out the good plants and the good fruit. Sin, including sinful thoughts, is like a, it's like a weed that just sucks the spiritual life out of us. A weed that just comes up and won't leave you alone. Some of you have that going on in your life today. There's some kind of weed you got in your life that is just sucking the spiritual joy out of you. And we don't need that. You know, when that happens, of course... This in turn steals our joy, makes our life miserable, and allows devil, the devil an opening to slide right into our lives. That's, that's the whole concept of it, and that's what, they, 
That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to slide in there and destroy our relationship, get that word, relationship with God. The question is, do you have a relationship that the devil would want to destroy with God? Sometimes we think we do, but do we truly have that one-on-one daily relationship with God? Do you talk to Him daily? Is He on your mind all day long? That's something to think about. If He's not, maybe your connection or your relationship is not as strong as you think it is. You know, I go to bed praying to God. I wake up with my prayers in God. I wake up in the night thinking about God. Why are you letting it rain over here when we got this to do? But there's a reason. Be thankful. Amen. The Bible says trials will make us stronger. We are a church that stepped out in faith and started building a building without one dime of financing in the bank. And look at it. That's God. That doesn't have anything to do with any of us. That's God's work right there to make that happen. Let's talk about stepping out in faith. We talk to people all the time, don't we, Tommy Taylor? Go, were y'all crazy? What is it? Are y'all stupid? What's he say? <laughs> stupid is, stupid does, isn't that Forrest Gump? Terry told me the other day when I said, that's stupid. She said, you really? She kind of cringed. But some people said that. Are y'all stupid or something? We got faith of a mustard seed. No, we have faith more than a mustard seed, but think what a mustard seed can do. So we got a building, and we're going to be moving pretty quick. And we're going to continue to use that building to plant seeds and produce fruit for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? That's what we're in here for. That's what we're here to do. I've talked enough, so I want to close right here with you. With leaving you these thoughts more than anything else. It's not you or I that grow the fruit of the Spirit. In our lives, it's not us, it's God Himself. If you think you can do it by yourself, that's not going to happen. The fruit grows from God Himself. We're called to be gardeners of what God has given us through Jesus Christ. God used Jesus Christ to plant those seeds in us, hoping that we would plant them in others' lives, that we wouldn't accept the normal, that we'd step out of our comfort zone and witness to others and lead others to know what Christ is doing for us. We are called disciples for Christ, every one of us. When you walk through life, you're planting seeds, just like Johnny Appleseed, which many of you know the story. He went all over the country planting Seeds to grow apple trees. He had a vision that he wanted apple seeds in every state. So that's what he did. He went everywhere planting them. Do you know he never saw one bit of result out of his planting because he didn't live long enough to see it. But look at all the apple trees. Go up across the northwest up here. Go up north. Apple trees everywhere. And some of those trees were started by Johnny Appleseed that have produced more fruit, more fruit, and more fruit. That's what God wants us to do. Go all over the place planting seeds. And then nourish them, water them. Plant them in good soil. Make sure when you're witnessing to someone else, you're not sharing your religion. You're sharing Jesus Christ and what He's done for you in your life. Your life is an open book to them. Your life is a Bible to them. It reveals what God is doing for you. Self-control will reveal who you truly are. I pray today that you're all planting good seed into your lives and that any weeds that might be growing and overtaking your life, that you'd pull them out of there and get rid of them. Burn them up. Get them out of your life.
because if you can rid yourself of those weeds, you'll be allowing God's Word to come in and nourish your heart and the Spirit just open up where you're just sharing that, where you're overwhelmed. Get excited. Get excited for Christ. Show everyone else how excited you are for Christ. Not just today, but every day. Take a negative, like the bus, turn it into a positive. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we thank You for this day. Father, we thank You for Your presence right here among us. And Father, we thank You for the blessing and the favor that You continue to pour out on Your church house and Your church family. And Father, today we lift this day to You. Father, we are thankful for the rain and how it's just colored our countryside. That it doesn't look dry and dusty, but it looks like it's full of life. And Father, we thank You for the seeds of the Spirit that You plant in our lives. And Father, I pray today that everyone here would be the ones that are going out planting those seeds in others' lives and that they are pulling the weeds out of their life and Father, just nurturing the soil with Your Word. Father, I know there are struggles and the world tells us that's not the way it should be. But Father, if we follow the way of the world, We know we're headed for destruction. So, Father, I pray today that we would follow you, that we would pick up those Bibles, that we would read your word daily. And, Father, that people that struggle with sin in their lives, Father, that they would just turn to your word and they would read what the fruits of the Spirit bear and the outcome and the results of it. Father, today I pray that just anyone struggling with this, Father, that they might not know you personally, that they would come to know you better. And if you are struggling in that today, if you have a lot of sin in your life, you have a lot of weeds growing there, and you've had enough, and you're ready for all that turn around, and you want to know Christ better, would you pray with me this morning? You pray out loud, you pray silently, however you choose to pray. But would you pray with me in this way? Father God, I know I'm a sinner, and I have weeds of sin growing all in my life. But Father, starting today, I accept You as my Lord and Savior. Would You come into my heart and place that Spirit in me? And Father, I believe You sent Your one and only Son to die on the cross to cover the sins that I have in my life and lay on me the chance to get rid of those. And Father, starting today, I commit my life to You. I commit my life to your word and your ways and planting those good seeds in my life. And today we ask all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. You know, I ask that you be still with me here for a minute and there's someone here today I'm sure that are struggling with that issue. May be the first time they ever accepted Christ in their life but they're tired of the way that life is. If you said that prayer for today, then I want to say this to you. Welcome aboard. If you want to know what you should do next, visit with the lay pastors lined along these walls or the elders. Or come pray with me because we want to be excited for you. Thank you for being here this morning.